Hey guys, it's Courtney from Willow's Bloom, a sanctuary of self-care for female entrepreneurs online on willowsbloom.com and here on YouTube. Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about purposeful profit, which means actually setting a revenue goal that you resonate with and that makes sense for your life and your business. This is one of my favorite topics because I feel like money is super taboo and I just don't agree with that. I like to talk about money. I think it's important. It's literally a piece of paper that is uh, a gateway to freedom, to, to whatever you really need at that moment. And so I feel like we should connect more with our profit. You know, it's not just like we're pulling an arbitrary number out of the air. And uh, this concept really came to me from Tess Wicks from Wander Wealthy, and I'm borrowing her formula in today's episode. And I'm giving a lot more of my own stuff in connection to it, but the formula I think was that thing that really wrapped it all up in a bow for me and made me realize, okay, this is exactly the number that I need, that I want, and that makes sense with my goals. And I wanna give that same satisfaction to you guys because I felt so much clarity after, and I felt an emotional connection to it. And that's because I wasn't just choosing a number out of thin air, it's because I was actually choosing it based off of the lifestyle that I wanted to lead, based off of the impact that I wanted to have, to have the people that I wanted to help, things like that. So you'll feel a lot more connected to your revenue after you watch this and do this exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna put the formula up on the screen right now and then I'm going to actually walk you guys through each step or what each thing is and then we're going to calculate the formula at the end and I'll put it up on the screen again for you guys so you can do that. So the first thing that I want you guys to start up doing is to write out your life vision. I always like to start big and then work my way back down to smaller increments. So look at the next year or fast forward to what you want your life to be like in one year from now. What are you gonna be doing? Who are you gonna be spending your time with? How are you gonna be spending your money? What people do you want to be working with? Things like this. Actually sit down and go through all those questions and more and really think about how money will play an impact on those roles or those dreams that you have. Once you have an idea of what you want your life to be like, then we need to get down to the actual facts. So we need to take a look at your business expenses. So go through and actually look at everything that you're spending your money on in your business. And I want you to categorize it in two different options, in two different categories. The first is going to be required and the next is going to be optional. So anything that you absolutely must have for your business to continue on is in the required field and anything that is optional is op in the optional field. But I also mean things that you feel like are required but probably aren't, put those in the optional because we need to know the absolute minimum that you can use or that you need to get by with your business month to month without going under. So we're going to be doing two different calculations. So I want you to take that required number and set it aside and then take that optional number and I want you to add a large percentage on it, maybe 25%, maybe 50%. And when you're adding that percentage, what I want you to keep in mind are the goals that you just wrote about in your annual life vision. So do you wanna hire more employees? Do you wanna expand? Do you wanna market in new spheres? That's what you're going to account for here is that growth. So besides what you're spending right now on your business, we're going to anticipate the growth of your business by tacking on another percentage for that growth. This should also include any savings that you want as well. Anything for maybe retirement, if you wanna include that here, or you can include it in your personal expenses, which we'll do in a second, but just keep those things in mind. All right, now that we've calculated those two numbers, the ideal amount that we can spend on our business and the required amount that we need to spend on our business, we're gonna set that all aside and now we're going to focus on our personal expenses, which is equally as important. So what I want you guys to do is something that I did about a year ago when I began my financial literacy journey. I sat down and I went through all my expenses for the last three to six months and I categorized them into different categories that I felt like encompassed 
um, multiple different purchases. So I'm gonna list off some of those categories for you right now. So for example, I had entertainment, gas and transport, eating out, groceries, hygiene, which included things like CVS or bath products or haircuts, makeup, subscriptions, unexpected expenses or miscellaneous if you'd like, business expenses, which you obviously have that in a separate category, but I lumped them all together for myself a year ago, which I wouldn't recommend. Then you have shopping, things like home goods, clothes, etc. Bills, these are our fixed costs like our um, electricity bill and our water bill, things like that. Our health, I had like therapy, acupuncture, doctors, um, fitness, travel, pets, learning. I love to take classes. So I'm always learning and I'm always spending money on learning. And then giving and savings, those are very important. Do not forget giving and savings. And if you did not include retirement in the business expense, I would include it for this one. Um, all right, so those are the main categories that I use. So go through and put everything in these categories and see how much you're typically spending in each one by dividing it by the number of months that you're doing this for. So I think I did mine for like four months. So I would just go through and just divide everything by four to see the average amount for each category. Then from here, what I want you to do is create two different sections, one for fixed costs and one for variable costs. This is just like with your business. You're finding out how much is the minimum amount you need to survive. So what I want you to do is place the categories or the types of expenses that will typically fall under fixed costs. So things like bills, your healthcare, your transport, you absolutely need these things to survive, your food, your groceries, that kind of thing. Those should all go into fixed costs. And I mean, I want you guys to really, really get down to the nitty gritty and cut out the things that you don't absolutely need. Netflix is not a fixed cost. I mean, you can put it there if you want to, but you don't need to. You don't need Netflix to survive. So then what I want you to do is go through and put everything else in the variable cost category. So from here, we're going to look at the fixed costs and we'll be able to see the absolute minimum amount of money you need to survive, keep your apartment, keep yourself alive and your pets and your family alive. Then when you have your variable costs, you're gonna add that with the fixed costs and create your second amount, which is your ideal cost of living. This is how much you would like to have. And then I want you to go in and add again, more money to this depending on your vision, the vision that you wrote in the very beginning of this. Do you wanna travel more? Do you wanna have more personal experiences that cost money? You wanna include those here. Think about savings, think about retirement, think about giving. Remember people tend to tithe like 10%, people tend to save or recommend saving 20%. So keep these kind of percentages in mind when you're adding it on to create your ideal uh, amount or cost of living. So um, just a side note, when you're tracking your personal expenses, if you feel like this is new to you or you're not really great at budgeting, my recommendation is to use YNAB, You Need a Budget, which is an app that does cost money but is super, super worth it. And basically it allows you to do what we just did, create categories for common expenses and then allocate, uh, not percentages, but allocate specific amounts of money that you have for each category. You only allocate money that you actually have, so you're not spending things that you don't, or budgeting things that you don't have. And then every dollar gets a job, meaning that every dollar is going somewhere and has a purpose and a role. This is a great, great, great budgeting technique. It's allowed me to save a lot of money that I actually struggled to save before. So I strongly recommend YNAB if you wanna work on your personal finances. And I think I'll probably do a video about that someday. All right, so at this point in time, we should have our ideal amounts that we should have for our business to run our business and our personal life. And then we should also have the absolute minimum to survive in operating our business and in our personal life. So we should have four separate numbers. Then from here, I want you guys to pick, pick a tax amount, which I just picked 35 to 40% because normally you're not gonna be charged more than 40% for taxes. And if you have a little bit more allocated, well then you just get more money back at the end of the quarter and why not? So I'd rather over calculate and give myself 
more money than I actually need than be scrambling at the end of the quarter to come up with that money. All right, and then the last number that we need to calculate is your profit number. So if you're not familiar with Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, then I strongly suggest you read this book, but he has a different approach to how we handle money. I'm not gonna go into the full details here and I'll definitely do a video on this specifically later, but one of the things he suggests is to actually allocate a percentage for personal profit, sort of like a bonus each quarter. So when you go in every two weeks to balance your books, um, what he actually recommends is taking a look at your income every two weeks and then transferring different percentages into different bank accounts that are allocated to different purposes. So one of those purposes or one of those percentages is profit. And profit, like I said, is a quarterly bonus. So every two weeks, I would take 10% or 2% or whatever of the income that I have and transfer it to my profit bank account. And then at the end of the quarter, I will either have that for emergency savings if I need it, or I can actually use that for profit for myself. I can take a vacation or get a massage or whatever. So what I want you guys to do is choose a small percentage, maybe like one to 5% as your profit number so that you have that little bit of wiggle room, both for savings for your business, for emergencies, and also for yourself so that you can really thrive in your business besides just having your normal regular salary. And before we move on to the calculations, I want you guys to write in the description box below, what would you spend your profit bonus on? For me, I think that I would like to go traveling. I've been really wanting to go back to France, so I think that would definitely be on my list. All right, so the very last step is to take all of these numbers and plug them into the formula. We wanna do this twice. We wanna do it for the minimum amount that we need to survive and the ideal amount, calculating how much we want possibly into the future. So with these two numbers, you'll really have a connection to your revenue goal. They're connected to that vision that you dreamed about. If you can just make as much as the ideal one, uh, the ideal number, then you'll really be on track for your vision, for your dreams, for helping people, for making a big impact. But otherwise, if you aren't really on track for that, at least you know that you'll survive if you reach this amount. So having these two numbers is super, super helpful. And if you guys want to have this all written out, which might be a little bit easier since this is so many calculations, um, I would suggest checking out the blog post, which is in the description box below. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying tuned. If you like this video, hit the like button or comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because then you'll actually get my videos to your YouTube channel. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.